find attack paths in Active Directory, Bloodhound needs to know the Active Directory security group memberships, who the local admins are on each computer in the network, and user sessions or where people are logged on in the environment. Um, of course, we need to know this so that we can go to the computer a certain user is using and steal their password or impersonate them some other way. Now, security group membership collection is pretty straightforward. We just query the domain controller and the DC will tell us who belongs to what security group. Uh, local admin rights, we just query each computer directly. But user sessions are not so straightforward. So in this video, what I'm gonna do is explain to you how that session collection piece actually works under the hood. And I'm gonna give you some strategies that you can use to make sure that you're getting the most out of sessions. So you're gonna have better data quality, you're gonna have more comprehensive user session information, and you're gonna be able to check to make sure that you have the best possible data for user sessions. To illustrate exactly how session collection works, I have a very simple Active Directory lab set up, comprised of a domain controller called Win2012DC001, and two workstations, one called Helpdesk1 with the Alice admin user running, and one called Workstation1 with the Bob user, user logged on. There's a function built into Windows called NetSessionEnu. This function provides information about ses sessions established on a server and the output of that function tells you the IP address for where that session came from and the username associated with that session. We can access that function locally on the DC by doing net session and we can see that there are no sessions established. We're going to establish a session against the DC from helpdesk1 just by navigating to the sysvol directory. We'll run net session again and we can see that now we have session information from that helpdesk system for Alice admin. So again, we're running this locally on the DC, and just to verify, we're gonna look at the IP address for Helpdesk 1, and we can see that it's 192.168.204.212, and sure enough, here on the DC, uh, we see 192.168.204.212 uh, for the Alice Admin user having a session established. Now the key here is that this information is also accessible by default remotely without needing any special privileges. To illustrate that, we're going to import PowerView on Workstation 1 and we're going to look at the help information for the commandlet called getNetSession. So this script is obviously offered, authored by Will Schroeder, also known as HarmJoy, and what this commandlet does is it just it gives us access to that NetSession enum function and we can target remote systems. In this instance, we're going to target the DC, and sure enough, from Workstation 1, we can actually see the same information that we saw when we ran net session locally on the DC. So the CNAME parameter is the IP address for the system that Alice Admin has logged on, and the username there shows us that, in fact, it is Alice Admin that has that session established. So you can see that we're not directly asking other systems who's logged on to you. We're not asking the Help Desk 1 system who's logged on, is it Alice Admin? We're actually asking other systems that have SMB sessions established against them, where are those sessions established from and what username is associated with that session? So it's actually the DC in this instance that is telling us Alice Admin is logged on to the system that has this IP address. And so we're kind of reflectively finding out where people are logged on in the environment. So let's look at an example with Bloodhound. Uh, you may have seen something like this uh, on your own on your own tests, where you have a user that is compromised, that has some kind of privilege, but you have no path to domain admin. In this instance, we're going to look at this user called T. Elliot. So this user has local admin rights on one system explicitly. So his user is added to the local admins group on the system called Management Two. He also has group delegated local admin rights on 64 systems. So through security group delegation, there are 64 boxes that he's an admin on. But derivative local admin rights, he only has 65. So even though he has relatively a lot of privilege, we don't really have any attack paths that are branching off. The reason for this is because we're missing a lot of session data. So let's see, uh, do we have a path to domain admin from T. Elliot? Uh, we don't. So when you see no data returned from the query, in this instance, it, me it just means that there was no path. So let's take a look at the domain admins group. 
we'll click on the group and we can see that we actually don't even have any session data for uh, any user in the domain admins. We do have sessions, we have 238 sessions in the graph as a matter of fact, but we don't know, we don't know where the domain admins are logged on. So the issue here is one of comprehensiveness. Um, we have a lot of session information, but we don't cover a lot of the users in the domain. We know where people are logged on, we don't know where the domain admins are logged on. We can measure just how comprehensive our data is at the Neo4j console. So go to localhost on port 7474 to pull up the Neo4j web console. One way I always verify that I'm connected is just by running the colon schema command. We're gonna build out a query that tells us what percentage of users we have session information for. First, I'm just gonna match any user and get a count. So we have 383 users. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna change that integer to a variable. So I'm returning a variable called total users. And so now you can see I have a, a variable coming back called total users and its value is 383, which is an integer. Now what I'm gonna do is get a count for how many users I have session information for. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna constrain that to unique users. So I'll return a count of distinct U2. And in this instance, U2 is only gonna match users that have sessions. And that number is 84. So we only actually have session information for 84 distinct users. To calculate the percentage of this, um, we'll do return 100 times, and then just the, uh, the count of total users divided by the users that we have sessions for. And we're gonna return that as a variable called user percentage. That comes back as 21%. So we actually only know where 21% of the users are logged on in the environment. Now recall that we're abusing the net session enum API function to reflectively find out where people are logged on in AD. Now the information that's available from that API call is only available for a certain amount of time. Um, in my informal testing, it's anywhere between about one to 15 minutes after that session becomes idle, and then it's just cleared out from the remote system. In Sharpound, we have a collection method called session loop. When you do default Sharpound collection, it will do the security group memberships, local admin memberships, and domain trusts. And then it'll also do one round of session collection. And what I mean by one round is that it's gonna, it's gonna query every system that's joined to AD for this session information, and then put that back into the CSV. The session loop is going to continuously run that process over and over and over, uh, by default with a five minute delay between each round. So over the course of a normal day, users are gonna be using uh, SMB shares on remote systems. They're gonna be doing their group policy update process in the background automatically. All of these things are gonna establish SMB sessions throughout the day. The session loop takes advantage of that. So what I always do is run session loop for at least two hours if I'm not concerned about being caught or if I'm running this as a defender. So here's the default method of running Sharpound. You just run sharpound.exe and it'll do the data collection for you. It's gonna get group memberships, local admins, sessions, and domain trusts if they exist. The session loop process is very, very easy to run. It's just a collection method that you specify with the dash C switch. So I'll run sharpound.exe dash C space session loop. And like I said, I like to have this run for at least two hours to make sure that I get really good comprehensive user session data. We'll speed through this and you know, by default, it's gonna run with a five minute delay between each round. So we'll just kind of skip that. To break out of this, just hit control C uh, when you are at the end of your two hour period. And then what you should find is that you'll have a sessions.csv file, which is much, much larger than the one that you had from the default Sharpound collection. Now what you wanna do is import that CSV into the Bloodhound database just by using the Bloodhound UI like you always do. Now let's go back into the Neo4j web console and see if we have more user session information. We're on the same query and now you can see that we actually have 53% of coverage. So we now know where 53% of users are logged on uh, in AD. 
Now let's go back into the Bloodhound interface and let's look at the domain admins for the internal domain. Now we have session information for uh, five of those users. So we know where they're logged on and they're logged on to 11 different systems. Now let's go back to our user that we were interested in before, T. Elliot. Now we can see that he has derivative local admin rights to 263 systems in the environment. So now adding all of that user session data opened up way more attack paths uh, from that user. We'll see if he has a path to domain admins group, and sure enough he does. And it's, it's actually two different shortest paths, very, very short. In fact, he just had to pivot to one of those systems that he had local admin rights on, and there was a domain app and sitting there waiting for him to take over them. So whenever I'm in a red team assessment and I can't find a path to DA, even though I might have control of some high privilege accounts, nine times out of 10, it's because I don't have enough session information. So run the session loop collection method for a few hours, get as much session data into the database as you possibly can. Use the queries that I showed you in this video for figuring out what percentage of users you actually have session data for in the first place, and try to get that percentage as high as you possibly can. For attackers, it's gonna be great because you'll find better, shorter attack paths, and for defenders, it's even better because you're gonna have a more comprehensive idea of how attackers can actually laterally move in your environment. Any questions, hit us up in the Bloodhound Slack, Twitter, or email. All the information will be down in the description of this video. And thanks again for watching.